What do you love about your mom? Um, when they take me to the water park. What does your mom cook that is your favorite? Um, waffles. And what makes mom happy or makes her laugh? Silly faces. What does your mom cook that you love to eat? Pancake with syrup on them. Yeah. I love you, Mom. Thanks for all you do. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thanks for all that you do. I love you. Thank you, Mom. We love you. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you so much, and we're so grateful for you and all that you do for us. Love you. Love you. What's your favorite thing that Mom cooks for you? Meatballs. And what does she do that makes you happy? Snuggles with me. And what do you do that makes her happy? Draw pictures for her. Hey, Mom. Just wanted to wish you a happy Mother's Day and let you know how thankful I am for your presence in my life and everything that you've taught me and just your unconditional love and everything that you do for me daily. And I am so grateful for you, and I can't wait for many more Mother's Day with you. Love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. We love you. Which of your mother's dishes is your favorite? I like her corn salad. I like her egg salad sandwiches. I like her baked potato with steak and broccoli. Bye, love you, Mom. What do you love about your mom? She gives me everything I want. What does your mom cook that's your favorite? Spaghetti. What makes your mom happy or laugh? Me tickling her armpits. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I appreciate everything you do for us. I love you. Go. Go? What's this? Fly me. Let's <laughs> see. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thanks for all you do for us and for our families. We, we love you. Like, what is it about your mom that you love? Uh, she's always there for me and she takes care of me when I'm sick. Hey everybody, this is Collins Cone. Collins, I'm doing an interview about your mom. What do you love most about your mom? <laughs> she makes me happy. What's your favorite food that she makes? I really like everything, but spaghetti probably. Good answer. All right. What makes your mom happy? Um, she loves it when I cuddle with her. All right, tell them bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. What do you love about mommy? Kisses. And what's the favorite thing that she cooks? Your favorite thing that she cooks? Um, girl, she's sandwiches. And what makes mommy happy? Kisses for me. Okay. Hey mom, happy Mother's Day. Um, I hope you are gonna have a super great day. I'm really excited to hang out with you today. Um, just wanna say thanks for being a really great mom. Showing me what it means to love people even when you don't know them. Um, and what it means to just be a really, really good mom. I don't know what I would have done without you to answer the phone this past year um, when I became a mom. So, I love you. Mwah. What is it that makes your mom laugh? And what does your mom cook that's your favorite? Um, mac and cheese. Evan? Um, I like, um, tater tot, steak, and some of that stuff that has, like, um, meat for me. Potatoes, or, I mean, potato chips. Potato chips. Potato chips. Potato What do you love about mom? What is that? Loving. Her loving? Okay. And what does mama cook that's your favorite? Hot dog. Carter Grace. Yes. What's the favorite thing about your mom? She takes care of me and likes me. What's your favorite thing that she cooks for you? Pizza. All right, 
Kate Austin. What do you love about your mom? She's so sweet and kind, and that she cooks for us all the time, and that's what I like about her. What's your favorite thing that she cooks for you? I like the tacos. Yeah. What is Mama's favorite thing to do? Spend time with all of us. Yeah. So love you, Mom. Love you, Mom. I love her. Um, I really love you. I like Mommy because she's sweet. Pearson, what do you love about Mommy? <laughs> um, she's nice to me. Good job, Mama. Love you, Mama. Hey mama. hey, mama. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. We, love we love you. you. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. I love you, Mommy. What is your favorite meal that Mama cooks? Spaghetti. And what makes Mama laugh or makes her happy? Us doing funny things. We welcome you to the sanctuary of First Baptist Church in Forsyth for this, the fifth Sunday of Eastertide. Our sanctuary is almost entirely empty. It is dark outside because we are recording this on Saturday evening. Most of you are sequestered safe in your homes, but Jesus Christ is still risen. He is risen indeed. Every Sunday, even during a pandemic, is a day to celebrate our risen Lord. We are glad that you have joined us this morning. We think we have the, figured out the technology to have the words to the song scrolling during the singing. We hope you will sing with us as we lift our voices in praise, prayer, and thanksgiving. Today is also a special day that we set aside for mothers. I trust your mom is watching this service this morning with a tray filled with breakfast that you lovingly made and served her. Our first hymn will be one entitled, Like a Mother with Her Children. It is a hymn of praise. It reminds us that many of God's characteristics are modeled for us through our mothers. We hope you will sing them out strong following the invocation. Now let us go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we come to you this morning praising you for who you are. We see many of your greatest attributes displayed naturally in our mothers. Your ability to comfort us, your guidance when we lose our way, your words of encouragement when we are ready to give up your forgiveness when we choose the wrong paths, and your steadfast companionship on our journey. We especially need those things during this time in our lives. This morning we lift to you our songs and prayers, knowing you delight in our worship, and yes, you also delight in us, your children. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our God. In your Son's name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, boys and girls. I need everybody ready. Are you ready, boys and girls? I hope you're out there listening to me. I need you to go find mommy. I hope she's right there close by. In fact, I need you to go sit in her lap. I need you to give her hugs or sit very close to her. But I hope you have told her happy Mother's Day because today is Mother's Day. You know, mommies plant many seeds. So I have a poem this morning, and I want you to stay close. I hope you found mommy, and I hope you're close. I want you to sit close to her as I share this poem with you. When a mommy hugs her children, she plants a seed of love, and all her wonderful kisses come from God above. When a mommy laughs and giggles, she plants a seed of joy, like when she tickles your funny bone, or plays with your favorite toy. When a mommy tucks you in at night, she plants a seed of peace. She prays for God to bless you with a sweet and restful sleep. When a mommy asks you to wait for things, a plant, a seed of patience is what she sows. For all the really good things in life take some time to grow. When a mommy makes your favorite food, she plants a seed so kind. She knows when chicken soup is good for you or when you have cookies on your mind. When a mommy washes your clothes, seeds of goodness she plants. She works so hard to scrub and scrub so you have clean shirts and pants. When a mommy takes care of you all day long, faithfulness is the seed she sows. She makes sure you have all you need, like lots of good food and shoes on your toes. When a mommy rocks you in your arms, a gentle seed is planted deep. Sometimes she'll sing a song that you like while you are in her arms to sleep. When a mommy tells you, no, 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 she plants a seed of self-control. For she knows all good things are good for you. So make sure you listen to what you're told. But the greatest seed that a mommy plants is the seed of God's great love. Mommy loves you, and God does too. It's Mother's Day, and you already have heard that, and hopefully by now you've celebrated it. I am one of those fortunate people in life that I have been blessed by two wonderful mothers in my life. Uh, my mother... Uh, who is still with me. I see her every day, uh, and I will be going later this afternoon to her house to be with her, and then the mother of my children. And you know, I think about both of those ladies, and I, I know that they know, but I want to remind them, and I want you to have the opportunity to remind your mothers uh, that they are highly favored with God and can be highly favored with us. Now, I know some of you have not been so fortunate, and you've had more challenging relationships with the mother figure in your life. But you know what? God is even a God to the motherless. He is a God who loves. And today, he is a God wishing to give you strength. So as we pray this morning, I hope that you will think about that mother figure in your life. Uh, and I hope that you will, if she is already gone to be with Jesus, I hope that you will spend some time praying and thanking those remembrances. But wherever you are in your relationship, I hope that you'll take these moments to talk to God about that relationship and talk to God about the blessings and the challenges of life. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for providing uh, love for us in the form of relationships we can have with others. And we've been blessed in many ways the relationships that you have placed us in. And we have also been challenged in some ways by those relationships. So help us be good servants today. Help us be kind. Help us 
be considerate, help us reach out to those in need, but help us reach out also with a desire to show appreciation, to say a good word, to give words of encouragement. Lord, we thank you for relationships you've given us. Help us strengthen relationships this day by depending on you, trusting in you, and then reaching out in your name and in your love. Thank you for blessing our lives. Go with us throughout this day. Bless this day and help us find ways to serve you. Hear our prayers, hear our songs as we sing them to you. We love you, Lord. It's in your son's holy name and the name of Jesus that we pray this prayer. Amen. Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to seal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken Oh, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My feet doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. Oh, I won't be shaken. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. power that can break off every chain this power that can empty out a grave this resurrection power that can say this power in your name power in your name my fear doesn't stand a chance Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. In your love. Oh, I'm standing in your love. Standing in your love. Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for mothers and this time where we're able to just come together and worship. Lord, we uh, just give this service to you this morning and we just want you to be glorified above all names. Just uh, be with us as we are spread apart worshiping together. Father, we love you and we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Have you ever been around a person that is a fisherman? You know, if you have, you usually hear some type of fish story, haven't you? You know, when, whenever you're around fishermen, they love to talk about the catch and, and you know, the big fish that may have gotten away or the, the big fish that they caught. And usually the further away from the actual time that they went fishermen, fishing, the uh, fish story seems to grow a little bit. Maybe even the fish 
has grown a little bit. It's always interesting to me. Well, today we're actually looking at a story in Scripture that is the greatest of all fish stories. Now, there's no embellishment taken in this. It's actually a miracle uh, where Jesus meets his first disciples. And it's a story that you and I can apply to our lives whenever we experience discouragement. Whenever we're discouraged, this is the type of story that if we are to sort of look at and examine, we can follow what these disciples did with Jesus and it will teach us what we can do whenever we're going through a, a rough time or a discouraging time in our lives. If you have your Bibles with you, go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 5. If you don't have your Bibles with you, go get them because you're at home. You should be able to get your Bible. And then open it up to Luke chapter 5, all right? Because that's where we're going to be this morning. This story is actually the second miracle that ever took place, okay? This is the uh, miracle that takes place right after Jesus performs his first miracle, which is at the wedding at Cana, where he turns water into wine. And this is where Jesus is out uh, on the lake, and he meets four of the 12 disciples. This is where he meets Peter and Andrew, who were brothers, and where he also meets James and John, who were brothers. And, and these were all fishermen, okay? And, and this is where he meets them. He meets them on the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee goes by three different names. I don't know if y'all are aware of that. One of those is the Sea of Tiberias, and it's also called Lake Genesaret, okay? Lake Genesaret, excuse me. And, and so this lake, you hear about it in Scripture all the time, and it's actually about like, say, Lake Tahoe. It's, it's not this huge sea. It's uh, about eight miles uh, wide, I believe it is, and maybe 13 miles long. I can't remember the actual length of it, but if you're sitting in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, you can pretty much see everything around it. And so this is where Jesus meets Peter, James, John, and Andrew. Now, they aren't disciples yet, okay? And they have been out fishing all night and didn't really have much luck. And they actually had no luck at all. They didn't catch a single fish. They'd been out on the sea for probably 10 hours and, and didn't catch a, a single fish. And then Jesus comes along that morning as they have come in from the sea and people are already realizing there's something different about this Jesus guy, okay? And people are already starting to follow him wherever he is at, and, and he's speaking to a large crowd, and he sees the gentleman come in from fishing, and he sees their boat. And so he approaches Peter, and he, and he asks Peter, he says, hey, Peter, can I use your boat to go out into the sea and use it as a platform? And that's where we're going to uh, pick up this morning, Luke chapter 5. It says, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake, Genesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, that's Simon Peter, and he asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. So, you sort of get the picture, large crowd, Jesus is talking to them, and, and, you know, I don't know if he just needed a place to sit or what, but he just says, hey, let me borrow your boat for a second and let me go out into the sea and speak to the people from there. Now, why did Jesus do that? Well, basically, there wasn't amplification during that time. And what does water do? Have you ever been out on a lake and you've seen somebody in another boat and you tried to talk to them? Usually you can because sound travels across the water, all right? If you're on land, the ground absorbs it, but whenever you're on the sea or you're on a lake, you can yell and it travels further. And so Jesus used this as a way to get his sound out a little better, all right? And so here he is, he's on the boat, on the platform of the boat, and he's preaching to the people. Another reason he did this was because 
this was the time where he was going to choose these four disciples to be his helpers. This is where he was going to choose these fishermen to become fishers of men instead of fish. And so we go on and we continue in the story. Verse 4, it says, When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Now launch out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now remember, they had just fished all night long. They were tired. And this is Simon's response. He says, Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night and we haven't caught anything. Have you ever been at a place like that in your life where no matter what you do, no matter how hard you work, you never seem to get ahead and, and it becomes discouraging? You know, some of you that are students, you just got through with finals and you may have studied and studied and studied and prepared for those finals and, and you still didn't make the grade you wanted. That's just the way life goes sometimes. Sometimes whenever you're having problems in your marriage you work as hard as you can to to make that marriage better but for some reason it just never seems to connect you can go through counseling you can read books you can do all types of things you know and sometimes you don't see any improvement at all sometimes you work at your job you're responsible you've always done great work and 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 you're starting to see some fruits of your labor. You're a, a hard-working employee. And then all of a sudden, COVID hits, and you're furloughed or you're laid off. You know, things are different today in our world. Sometimes we go through life, and we fish all night, but we don't catch anything. Well, that's where the disciples were at this point. And, you know, it's interesting to me because whenever I look at this miracle in Scripture, it has a lot to teach us because everybody I know in life is fishing for something, okay? Everybody I know is fishing for something. We're fishing for approval. We're fishing for security. We're fishing for uh, a job if we're out of work. But everybody I know is fishing for something. And this miracle teaches us what to do whenever we are discouraged. What to do whenever we're discouraged. And, you know, Jesus wants to bless us, but we have to be willing to accept the blessing. All right? I want us to look, continue some more in the story. The Bible tells us the rest of the story. It says, after Jesus finished speaking, he said to Simon, now launch out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. The Bible says that when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. I don't know if you've ever seen a fishing net, but that's a lot of fish when it causes the nets to begin to break. And it says, so they signaled to their partners, that's James and John, in their other boat to come out and help them. And they came and they filled both boat, boats so full that they began to sink. Now, folks, I told you, this is the greatest fish story that's ever been told. See, they caught more in 10 minutes than they had caught in the whole 10 hours the night before. Why did that happen? Let's look at the story a little more in depth, and, and let's see what it tells us. See, the disciples, they took four steps of faith in the story, and, and we can learn from them. The first thing that you see that Peter, Andrew, James, and John do is this. They gave Jesus complete access to their life. And if you and I want to experience a, a miracle of being encouraged in our own lives instead of experiencing this discouragement that we sometimes go through, we have to allow Jesus to have complete access to our lives. If you look at verse 3 of chapter 5, it says, Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little, a little from shore. Then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. It's pretty simple. The starting point is getting Jesus in your boat. 
all right? That's the starting point. You put Jesus in your boat, if you want to move from emptiness to fullness in your life, you put Jesus in your boat, and you let him have control of your life. See, they'd fished all night, hadn't caught anything. Ten minutes, they are overflowing with fish, more than they could even handle. What was the difference? Because they were in the same lake, they were in the same boat, they were using the same nets, it was the same fishermen, they had the same partners, and it was even the same fish in the lake. The only difference was Jesus was in the boat. That was the difference. Jesus was in the boat. Matthew 6, 33 tells us this. It says, seek ye first, all right? Not second, not third, not fourth, not fifth. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, not success, not satisfaction, not salary. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then all of these other things will be added unto you. We have to get our priorities right. We have to get our priorities right. We have to seek God first. We have to put Jesus in our boat because whatever you want God to bless is what you put first in your life, all right? Whatever you want God to bless, to bless is what you put him first in. Let me explain what I mean. You want God to bless your time? You give him the first few minutes of your day. You want God to bless your week? You give him the first day of every week. You want God to bless your money? You give him the first 10% of your money, no matter how little it is. So the question is this, have you committed to having Jesus in your boat? Have you committed to having Jesus in your boat? Whenever you're going through tough times, whenever you're going through trying times, first thing we do is, is we try to change the net. You know, or, or we try to change the boat or, or we try to change the business partner. But the first thing we should do is put Jesus in the boat with us. We just need to change who's in charge of the boat. All right? All right, second thing that you see here, the second step, is I have to admit that my efforts aren't working. If you look at verse 4 and 5, when Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon Peter answered, he said, Master, we worked hard all night and we haven't caught anything. Do you realize how hard that was for Peter to admit this? Peter and uh, all, of his, all of his friends here, they weren't uh, just weekend fishermen. All right, This is what they did for a living. They were professionals. And they were having to admit, you know, that they just didn't have it all figured out. They had fished all night and hadn't caught anything. They had done their very best. They had tried their hardest, but they still didn't catch anything. You know, sometimes life's like that. Sometimes life is out of our control. Matter of fact, most of life is out of our control. We can't control the economy, we can't control other people, and we can't control <clears throat> diseases, all right? And, and what we can do, instead of trying to control all of this, is we can trust Jesus, who is put in our boat with us. See, you get Jesus in the boat, and then the second step is you admit that it just didn't work, and you're not doing it right without without him being in your boat. And the third step is this. If you want to see God turn emptiness into fullness, if you want to see God turn discouragement into encouragement in your life, then I obey whatever Jesus tells me to do. You do whatever he tells you to do. Look at verse 5 in this scripture and see exactly what it says. Look at verse 5. It says this. It says, uh, Jesus told him to launch out further. Simon says, Master, we've worked hard all night we haven't caught anything we're empty we've come up empty but because you say so I will let down the nets all right if you have your Bibles I want you to circle that because it says because you say so all right because you say so I will let down the nets I'm going to do this because you say so think about this for a second Jesus is in the boat now he's 
given these experienced fishermen fishing instructions, Peter has this unquestioned obedience. He says, because you say so, I'm going to do it. When are you going to become a because I say so man or woman in your life? All right. When are you going to become a because I say so? See, the Lord's instructions don't, don't necessarily make sense to us all of the time, but he does give us instructions. And we need to make ourselves available to him, and we need to be able to say, because you say so, I'm going to do this and not question it. So what has God told you? What has God told you in your life to do that you are not doing? That's a question for you this morning to think on and reflect a little bit on. What has God told you to do in your life that you're not doing? I don't know what it is, but God will tell you exactly what he wants you to do. He tells you what your purposes are in life, and we all have a purpose. But, but listen, I do know this. Disobedience to what God is calling you to do ends up hurting you. It doesn't hurt God. It hurts you. Because then you have missed the blessing, all right? What happens is, if we aren't doing what God has called us to do, then we miss out on the blessing. And if you look at the scripture, <clears throat> blessing may come in three different phases. Because see, if you look at it, Jesus says when, he told them to launch out now. By the way, whenever you see that launch out, that's taking a risk, okay? You have to put your faith to work here and that's what you see happening here faith it, it doesn't happen without risk taking place and then uh, it goes on the next step is this it says then it says what all right it tells you I want you to let your nets down and then he says where launch out into deep water he wants them to launch out into deep water why why do you think that is does God tell why does God tell Peter to do that because that's where the big fish are, all right? The problem I see in our society today is most Christians, they stay in the shallows, all right? They stay in the shallows because it's safe. They don't want to see the big waves coming in and crashing down upon them. They don't want to rock the boat. But God calls us to go into the deep waters and to move out of the shallows. He wants us to quit catching minnows and he wants us to catch boats full of fish. It's interesting because I notice all the time people don't want to get deep. They want to live in the shallows. They want to do just enough to get by. They want to catch a little bit of fish, but we don't want to get the big blessing that God wants to offer each one of us. So, we give Jesus complete access to our life, and we admit that our efforts aren't working, and then we obey whatever Jesus tells us to do, and then we have to expect for Jesus to turn things around. See, if God tells you to go fishing, and then he comes along with you in the boat, and he tells you where to put your nets... Don't you think he's going to let you be productive? If you look at the story, it was very much that way. 1 Thessalonians tells us that the one who calls you is completely dependable. If he said it, then he'll do it. If God is calling you, then you can depend on where he's calling you to do, excuse me, where he's calling you to go and what he's calling you to do. Because it tells us in the Word of God that He is completely dependable. It's interesting because we always question God and His direction in our life. But here it is, if, if in this story, Jesus had control over nature, folks. I mean, here He is in the, the Sea of Galilee. The, and He tells all the fish to come over to this one spot in this deep water where they can catch all the fish at one time he says guys let down your nets 
If God is able to control nature, don't you think that he can take care of you? Don't you think that he can take care of you? And, and he can change your situation immediately. It doesn't have to, you know, some of you have, may have lost your jobs due to this COVID crisis and, and you've been looking online, you've been trying to find something new and, and, you know, maybe God has you in this waiting time right now to learn something from him. Maybe he can, and it's not a maybe here, he can overturn any situation immediately. He changed this situation with the fishermen in 10 minutes. It's interesting though, if you look at the story, go ahead, Luke 5, it says this, it says, when they had done so, when they had done what, whenever they obeyed Jesus and done what he had told them to do, it says, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break, so they signaled for their partners and other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Whenever they followed what God told them to do, they were experienced more blessing than they could ever think of or imagine, more blessing than they could handle, and so they had to share with others. God is looking for people to bless he's looking for people to bless he wants to bless your socks off notice what Peter's reaction was in verse 8 and 9 it says when Simon Peter saw this this miracle of fish he fell at Jesus's knees and he said go away from me Lord I'm a sinful man remember now Peter's not a disciple yet he's just a businessman he's just a, a fisherman and this is what he says to Jesus. He says, For he and all of his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's business partners. This miracle is the turning point of their lives. So I want you to notice the, the real lesson. It says, Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. And of course Simon was afraid because he had seen God do this really remarkable thing this unbelievable thing and he was afraid but he said hey don't be afraid from now on you will catch men let me stop right there for a second see this miracle isn't about money this miracle isn't about success it is about God's purpose for your life all right? This miracle is about the kingdom of God. He said, I'm going to teach you to fish for men. I'm going to teach you how to change the world. I'm going to teach you how to change lives in the name of God. I'm going to mobilize you to fish for people. Jesus called his disciples when they were grown men and women. And he may be calling you. You may have been working a job that has seemed like a dead-end job your whole life. And, and, and you've been looking for something more. He may be calling you to go into gospel ministry and to become a fisher of men. See, it tells us that they left their jobs, and it tells us that they followed Jesus. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid, from now on you'll catch men. So they pulled up their boats on the shore, and they left everything, and they followed Jesus. Y'all see what happened? They had two boats full of fish, and Scripture says that they left everything. They didn't even clean to catch they left everything and began to follow him see why in the world do you need the the blessing that was given to you whenever you can walk alongside of the blesser and that's what they were doing they said you know what we could probably sell these fish and not have to work for five years but i'm not really worried about the fish i want more of this guy I want more of Jesus. I want to walk beside the blesser.
Because if he was able to do that, he's going to be able to help us experience more blessings in our life. You know, if you look at the story, aren't you interesting? Aren't you interested in having a relationship with Jesus like that? Aren't you interested in walking daily with the blesser, with Jesus, wherever you are going? You know, God says to us, maybe I'm not calling you into ministry, but at least let me use your boat. You know, you may be working in a job without that many other Christians in it, and he may need you to allow him to work through you and use your platform. Use your boat as a platform to share the gospel with the lost. Folks, we're still called to do that. And if you look around you in our world today, there's a lot of people who are lost. As you look around and you see those who are hurting, and you see those who need something different in their lives, maybe they need you. Maybe they need you to be Christ. You know, I encourage you, if Jesus isn't in your boat, you need to let him have control. Because whenever he has control of your boat, he tends to bless, and his blessings are overabundant. I hope that if you're discouraged today, if you're experiencing a time in your life where, where you need encouragement, I hope that you allow Jesus to have control of your boat. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for today. I pray for those who are listening this morning. I pray that you are with them during this discouraging time in their life. And I pray that they begin to understand that you have called them to something great, that you have called them for a purpose that glorifies you. Father, help us to let you use our boat and let us be a people that allows you to get into the boat with us. Let us be a people that follows you wherever you call us. Lord, we thank you and we love you. In Christ's name, amen. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am hell when I am falling short and when I don't be loved you say I'm yours and I believe I believe what you say of me I believe everything that matters 
Jesus now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you I find my identity. When I think I am weak, you say I am hell. When I am falling short, and when I don't belong, you say I am yours. And I believe, I believe what you say. Taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet. You'll have every failure, God. You'll have every victory. Moms, I hope you have a blessed Mother's Day. I hope you uh, are treated better than you've been treated before by your family today and that you have some time of being able to love on them and enjoy time with them at your home today. I encourage you, if you want to, uh, we will be having our Mother's Day banner uh, outside of our church in front of the uh, office door entrance and you're able to come here today and take pictures as a family. You can come as you are. You can come in your pajamas like you may have watched the service today. Or you may want to dress up and come and take a picture. But if you come and take a picture, we encourage you to uh, put a hashtag on there and post it to our Facebook page on uh, social media. So we encourage you to do that. Uh, so we are able to see your pictures and we're able to share uh, your pictures across our Facebook page. Also, uh, we encourage you to uh, continue to be on the lookout at our YouTube channel uh, throughout the week. We have student ministry ideas and things that are placed on there. We have uh, children's ministry. We even have uh, hymn sing-alongs with Glenn and I that are put on our Facebook page and our YouTube. So we want you to stay encouraged and, and plugged into things uh, that are going on in the life of our church. Also, you can go to uh, fbcforsyth.com, our new improved website. We have a way, because many of you have asked uh, for, you know, Hambrick, how can I get my tithe uh, in and turned in? How can I turn it into the church. Well, one way you can do it besides physically mailing it in is go to our website and click pay now on there and it will take you to um, it will take you to a PayPal uh, site and you're able to be able to tithe to our church through PayPal. We encourage you to do that. You know, I know even though we aren't meeting here together, uh, we still have ministries and we still have uh, missions that we support and are involved in, and that is where your tithe goes to, to help 
make things uh, apart, make, make the kingdom of God better by sharing in his work. So I encourage you to continue uh, to contribute to our church during this time. Give God the first 10% uh, so he can have control over your life and even over your finances because whenever we give to him uh, first, then that shows that he is priority in our lives. I encourage you to love on mom today, spend some time with her, and make sure that she is pampered and and feels great. You know, you can't go take her, well, I guess you can in Georgia now. You can go pay for her to go get a pedicure, but to be safe, you might want to just do it at home. So I encourage you to, to love on mom today. You have a great week, and we look forward to where we're able to come back together and see each other face-to-face soon. And we hope that you stay safe and that you continue to be the hands and feet of Christ wherever you can minister to those in need. Thank you. We hope to see you again soon.